Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Podcast with an Accent. I'm your host, Radim Gillian, and today I have with me Donna Hoffman, golf influencer and the founder of Women on Course. Welcome, Donna. Thank you. Donna, what is your accent? What accent do you speak with? Well, I try to speak a little Spanish, but um, no, actually my accent is golf. I'm, I'm very immersed in the golf world, introducing the game to people and all the benefits that it brings. Perfect. What is your story, Donna? My story is I started out as a CPA and the reason I got into it was because I could work for any type of industry, any type of business. And I was always drawn to lifestyle type activities. And my path is very unusual. I went into public accounting. Then I graduated into the advertising business and got into movie making, which was really fun. And along the way, I discovered that golf was a really interesting sport. I used to be a golf widow, meaning that I did not have any interest in the game. But I was introduced to it by someone I was dating and I discovered, wow, this has a lot of things women would be interested in that they don't know about. So being sort of entrepreneurial and looking for ways to create my dream life, I did a television show about the game of golf and that spiraled and started this women on course business that I've been doing 15 years. And here you are. And here I am. Yes. Not on the golf course today. <laughs> Uh, what are you inspired by, Donna? Uh, the things that inspire me, um, I tend to have a lot of ideas that pop into my head. I don't really know where they come from. Um, I'm inspired by other people's energy. Um, I am inspired by nature, and I'm very drawn to color. And these things are very peaceful to me. They allow me to think and be very creative as a result of that. Yes, being creative is important. I love, I love, I have a creative, but a very analytical mind, but I do come up with very unusual, I'm a problem solver. So if somebody says they want something done, it's, I will keep thinking of ways to figure out how to do it almost to the point where people say, all right, already, it's, it's, it's not going to happen. But I, I think there's always an answer, always a solution. I believe it was Google who said that they hire people, especially who love shortcuts. Ah, shortcuts, yes. I, do. I love shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> We're being very efficiency. creative. Efficiency and creativity. Yeah. Ah, nice. Uh, does your life look uh, like what you envision it to be in your 20s right now? You know, I didn't really envision my life. I knew I wanted to have a family and children, and I do. I have three fabulous children, um, a nice husband. Um, but beyond that, I just didn't really know what my career would be, although I would say maybe I'm a workaholic, but I really don't feel what I'm doing is work. I've been an entrepreneur for about 30 years now, and I get up and this is what I like to do. So doing things I like to do is maybe what I envisioned, and I guess I'm, I'm living that, so it works. With that being said, what would you tell your younger self? Well, uh, the first thing I would tell myself is don't do things because other people expect you to do them. I think I said yes to a few things that I probably should have said no, just thinking that that's what was expected of me, either society or people. Um, as I'm getting older, I'm, I have a birthday next week, so I'm being very reflective about you know how much time do I have left and is this really what I want to be doing with my time? So I think when you're younger, you think you have all the time in the world. And I would probably tell myself, you should just kind of live by, if I had one year left to live, is this what I would like to be doing? And if the answer is no, then that means you should be doing something else. If money were not a factor, what would you really be doing? That, I do ask myself that question too. Um, I might take more vacations. I tend to work too hard, but I think I would be doing the same thing. I'd be doing what I'm doing with a little more if I had more money, I could in include more people into what I'm doing, and I would probably do, um, yeah, uh, maybe I have a house by the water. Donna, what is the best story from your life that has a valuable message? When I was um, working at my video company, um, I had a gentleman that kept calling me and asking me to meet him after hours. 
And I was single at the time and I thought, you know what, I'm not gonna meet this guy after hours. He's probably gonna ask me out. We well, kept asking and asking and asking. And at the same time he was asking, my business partner and I were thinking that we, it was time to get out of the business. This is back when everyone started to get a video camera, websites were coming on board, and we thought that our business might become obsolete. And we were thinking, how do you sell a company or how do we get out of this? And we really had no idea. We didn't do anything proactive. But finally, this guy kept calling me and I said, look, I'm not gonna meet you after work. What do you wanna talk about? And he finally spilled the beans. He said, we wanna buy your company. I'm like, you're kidding. He said, no, I said, I'll meet anytime. And the next thing you know, within about two weeks, we had an offer, we sold the company. And had I not listened to this guy, I don't know what would have happened, but just kind of here we're wishing for a way to out and here's somebody badgering me and calling me. And in the future, when somebody really wants to talk to me, I'm gonna always say yes. What is your favorite book and why? So I'm in two book clubs. I've been in two book clubs for 20 years. And one of my most recent books I just read was Educated. Um, it's a memoir. It's about a woman that grew up in a very dysfunctional family and really didn't go to school. And she really turned her life around by getting an education and going out on her own. And it was very inspiring to me. Um, somebody just kind of doing things outside the expected realm of what you're supposed to do. And she kind of broke out. And, That was very inspiring. And what is your favorite quote? My favorite quote comes from my father. He is 86 now, and he got remarried at 82. And he likes to say, first of all, he was born happy, which I think is interesting. But his quote that I really like is, you're never too old to have a happy future. So Deep. That yeah. is very deep. Yeah, I like that. Then uh, what is the most important photograph in your life? There's one that I have hanging up. It's, um, it's actually two photographs. One was taken of me when I was 21 years old. And it's kind of a headshot. And my daughter, when she was 21, had a headshot taken. And if you put them side by side, it's an identical pose, expression. You could kind of superimpose them over each other. It's very eerie. It's very interesting, but those two pictures are very, very memorable for me. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. What turns you on, Donna? Um, being outside, anything outside. Just love the fresh air when it's not too cold. It has to be perfect temperature. Um, breathing the fresh air. I love being at the beach, uh, in the mountains, anything outside. It's just, to me, that's the best. What is the way for people to find you? So we have a website. It is womenoncourse.com. And we're actually all over the country, all over the U.S. And we just basically help women get outside and enjoy the sport or be around the game or just meet other people. It's really more of a connection to each other. And people are more free to make meaningful relationships. Amen to that. Yeah. Thank you for being on the show, Donna. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. And for the people in the audience, thank you for being here and looking forward to seeing you in the next episode. Okay, thank you.